All right, folks. In today's funny story, we bring you a tale of interstellar misunderstandings so epic, it'll have you snorting space dust. Our story begins light years away, on a planet called Zorb. We will bring you a crack team of alien negotiators, crash landing on a far-off planet called Earth, tasked with a mission of cosmic importance. Apparently, Earthlings have developed some doohickey that's throwing a galactic wrench into their whole way of life. Earth, the barbaric planet they'd only heard nightmarish rumors about, has apparently creating some sort of Wi-Fi wave that was giving their tentacle-based internet a serious case of the hiccups. These three Zorboids, exquisitely dressed in shimmering jumpsuits, think Disco Ball meets Astronaut, were on a mission. Now, these aliens aren't your average green blobs with ray guns. They come from a planet where societal hierarchy is everything. Their leader, the supreme leader Glork, is a being so feared and revered, planets tremble at his mere voice. Or at least, that's the official story. Negotiation was key. These Zorboids, Zork, Blork, and their intern, Flork, still learning the difference between a space probe and a space probe for your breakfast, were the elite diplomatic squad. After a near-death experience with a black hole that smelled suspiciously like burnt toast, they finally reached Earth. Landing wasn't exactly smooth. Their spaceship, resembling a giant chrome avocado, sputtered and coughed its way down, crash landing in the most unleader-like place imaginable, Farmer Jack's pasture. Now, Zorboids had studied Earth through blurry satellite images, but let's just say their intel was a tad lacking. Their high-tech life-form detector, basically a glorified Roomba with disco lights, beeped excitedly. The first life form it picked up? A particularly grumpy-looking cow chewing on cud. Zork, brandishing a space blaster that looked like a high-tech potato peeler, approached the bovine with all the authority of a space emperor. Earthling. He boomed in his voice translator, which kept getting stuck on a bad Elvis impersonation. Take us to your leader. The cow, unimpressed by this glittery interloper, simply blinked and continued its leisurely munching. Zork, Blork, and Flork, who was desperately trying not to giggle, exchanged bewildered glances. Surely their leader wouldn't be some bovine buffoon. Next up on the life form detector, a flock of sheep. The Zorboids, ever hopeful, repeated their demand. The sheep, in their own silent rebellion, simply shuffled a few feet away and resumed their grass-chomping duties. Our heroes were starting to sweat, or, well, secrete a concerning amount of green goo, under their jumpsuits. Finally, the detector picked up a life form with even less dignity a scrawny chicken pecking at the dirt outside a rickety farmhouse. Zork, at his wit's end, bellowed. Enough of this avian charade. Lead us to your leader, Earth scum. The chicken, bless its tiny feathered heart, just kept pecking. Defeat hung heavy in the air, thicker than the stench of fermented space berries Zork had packed for the trip. Dejected, they stumbled towards the farmhouse, its peeling paint and crooked chimney a testament to its unique charm. The hinged door, which took them a good ten Earth minutes to figure out, whooshed open, revealing a scene that would make any intergalactic diplomat faint. A human, clad in stained overalls and sporting a suspicious amount of nose hair, was sprawled on a couch, glued to a glowing rectangle that emitted flickering images of men in brightly colored padded suits tackling each other. In his other hand, he clutched a container filled with a suspicious amber liquid. Now, Zorboids prided themselves on their adaptability, but this, this was uncharted territory. To get this leader's attention, they did the only logical thing. They stood directly in front of the glowing rectangle. The human, momentarily startled, looked around them with an expression that could only be described as mildly inconvenienced. Can I help you, fellas? He drawled in a voice that sounded like gravel being chewed. After a frantic exchange of clicks and whistles, their translator was officially on the fritz, Zork managed to sputter out, We, we demand to speak with your leader. The human, completely unfazed, shoved them aside with surprising strength and resumed watching his 
sporting event? Just then, a loud engine noise ripped through the air. The human shot up, a look of pure terror replacing his previous apathy. Oh no, he muttered. She's early. In a whirlwind of activity, the leader transformed his living room. Beer cans vanished, replaced by decorative pillows. He even managed to squeeze into a slightly stained shirt and apply a suspicious green goo under his armpits. Was this some barbaric earth custom? Just as the house was spick and span, a car screeched to a halt outside. The Zorboids, bewildered, have never experienced this type of fear anywhere in the galaxy. They watched as the human sprinted towards the front door and shouted, Hi, honey, you are home early. As Mildred, Farmer Jack's wife, enters the house, the Zorbians, pushing all the buttons on their voice translator, bow down respectfully and said, Extreme Supreme Leader, we come in peace. <laughs> if you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here.